Hi everybody, welcome to episode 9 of Thought Bubbles, sparkling insights into community engagement. Coming to you today from my car in Adelaide, I'm a bit on the go and all over the place this week, so sorry there's no glorious view, but I can promise you an exciting location for episode 10 next week, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I've got a question that's been sent in by Andrew this week, and Andrew says, you have an international audience. Thank you, Andrew, that makes me feel very popular indeed, but it's kind of what happens, I guess, when you put your stuff on YouTube and Facebook. But I know what you mean, because he says, you've been working in a few different countries engaging communities. And you're quite correct, Andrew, I have worked in the UK, in the the community engagement field, and now in Australia. Um, He says, does it change from state to state and from country to country? That's a really good question, and it's something that I've really pondered on over the last few years, certainly since I've been settling into community engagement life in Australia. I would say yes, it definitely does differ. Um, what I notice in the most, the biggest difference for me in comparison of my work here in Australia and in the UK is it, the UK has an incredibly strong voluntary sector, or the third sector as it's called. So there's the private sector, private business, there's the public sector, government, and then there's this very, very strong third sector or voluntary sector. I've just done a quick Google of the origins of the third sector and why it's in place, but of course it's a huge historical perspective as to why that is now a very strong sector in its own right. But for me, it's quite a critical difference. There, I worked a lot in the late 90s and early 2000s, working in collaboration with the voluntary sector, bringing together the voluntary or third sector and government, the public sector, together to work together collaboratively. It was quite common practice. And the voluntary or third sector often represented people, the individual people out and about there. So a very, very interesting model that was very much just part and parcel of engaging communities in the UK. In Australia, it's quite different, um, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why we are lacking a strong presence of the third sector. There certainly is a voluntary sector. There are millions and gazillions of not-for-profit organisations in Australia, brilliant ones doing some great work, but something is missing in that those organisations aren't represented as a whole or aren't talked about as a whole. They're more just seen as individual organisations. And so we, or my clients yet as government, haven't yet really worked out a very strong model or way of working collaboratively with those organisations. So that's something for you to think about. And I'd love to know what people in the third or voluntary sector here in Australia think about what I'm saying. What I also notice a difference in the UK, and I think this is about sort of social or political history in the UK. And again, I've only got three, four minutes, three minutes to talk about this. But there's a, there's a much stronger grassroots movement of people wanting change and wanting action in the UK. And I, I've definitely seen a difference there to the uh, approaches of communities here in the in Australia that there isn't such a strong grassroots movement. That's not to say it's not there. I'm just not seeing it as strong. And again, it comes back. To that political history and social history I think that has formed that. In relation to state to state within Australia definitely yes whenever you fly in and fly out of a state to do community engagement work you notice quite a difference. Um, I would say for me the main observation is often around the state government and the political um, viewpoint of the current state government. That state government has quite an impact over the the state as a whole and their approach to community engagement. Uh, So if you're looking at left wing versus right wing on the political spectrum you can see some quite different approaches to engagement Um, and I I do have opinions as to which state is doing better than others. Um, The other thing to mention of course is that Australia here we've really embraced the IAP2 model of engagement and the spectrum of community participation. Um, Google it, I haven't got time to explain what it is but we've really gone for that here. When I first arrived in Australia eight years ago to move here um, it was just coming in and we became obsessed and we've really used it as a a sort of grounds for um, our community engagement and that has been brilliant and it has really 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 moved community engagement to a different place but equally at the same time it's limited us and it's really kind of um, almost become a bit clinical in the way that we as we not me we government engage with communities so I would like to see a bit of a shift now in the future to uh, mm, different approaches and and looking at community engagement a bit more broadly but still using what we've learned and I will continue to still use the IAP2 stuff because it is good it's good stuff anyway I've gone way over time today but obviously this is a passionate topic for me Uh, thank you Andrew for the question I'd love to hear what you think see ya